Hello everyone, I welcome you all of you once again in this course of video lecture where we are trying to learn organic chemistry. In the la last lecture, we were learning to understand how to draw resonating structures and I was, uh, we were discussing uh, this particular intermediate. Now, in order to draw resonating structure, uh, we, what we are doing is we are trying to bring negative charge adjacent to positive charge. Positive charge means empty or vital, negative charge means completely filled or vital. When completely filled or vital become, comes adjacent to completely empty or vital, we transit one electron from completely filled to completely empty. So both of them have one and one. And they result in overlapping and they result in formation of a new bond. So the idea is bring negative charge adjacent to positive charge. Positive charge is at C1, we will try to bring negative charge at C2. Now negative charge at C2 can develop when C2 will gain an electron from outer source. Now the electron from the outer source can be given only from the pi bond. There is a pi bond between C2 and C3 will break that pi bond. That pi bond has two electrons. One of the electrons is of C2, one of the electrons is of C3. Now, we, if we put both the electrons into the orbital of C2, C2 will gain its own electron and apart from that, it will also gain the electron of C3. So, in that course of breaking the bond and putting the, both the electrons in C2, orbital of C2, C2 will gain a negative charge. And when we bring plus and minus adjacent, no more we will discuss why it result in formation of a bond. All we have to do is bring negative charge, adjacent to positive charge and that will give us a pi bond. But uh, also uh, C3 will develop a positive charge because the electron of C3 which was there in the pi bond was given to C2. So C3 is devoid of its electron so the positive charge will jump from C1 to C3 and the structure will look like this. At a time, we will break only one bond. The bond between C4 and C5 will not be broken and it will be appearing in the structure as it is. We will not break both the bonds simultaneously. In drawing resonating structures, we will break only one bond at a time. Now we have broken the bond between C2 and C3 and the plus charge has jumped from C1 to C3. Now we are at this structure. Now what we have to do is, we have to proceed in the same direction. As the charge has came from 1 to 3, now we have to proceed in the same direction, shifting the charge from C3 to C5. Now the idea is we have to bring negative charge adjacent to positive charge. So we will break this bond between C4 and C5 once again and we will put both the electrons of the bond into the orbital of C4. So this plus charge and minus charge will result in formation of a bond and at C5 a plus charge will be generated because the electron of C5 that was in the pi bond has been put into the orbital of C4 so C5 is devoid of its electron so it will develop a positive charge. So if we draw the next resonating structure this will look something like this. Now the, uh, the first thing to observe, the plus charge was at C1, it came to an alternate position at C3 in the second RS and yet to the alternate position at C5 in the third RS. Now the charge cannot move any further to its left hand side because there is no atom left. So this is the final RS, we cannot draw any more RS. Now if you go back, you will get back the same RS, if you go back, you will get back the same RS. So there is no need to bring this plus charge to the opposite direction. While drawing the RS, we will try to bring the plus charge in the same direction and if we come to the edge, then that is the end. We cannot draw any more RS. So for this particular intermediate, we can draw a maximum of three resonating structures. Now learn this term. These are resonating structures when you shift the position of charge and when you shift the position of pi bond. Now, after having learned this, now let's try to understand why we learned this. Now this learning helps in understanding what's happening. Let me present to you the first example that we did. This will be simple to understand. This was the first intermediate of whose resonating structures we drew. And the resonating structure of this intermediate will look like this. If I draw the orbital diagram, the 
the orbital diagram will look like this. Now, now, now let's see what we have done. What we have done is in this structure we have a bond at this position and it has been shown here. The, here we have a vacuum. There's electronic vacuum, there's electronic high pressure. Now we push all the electrons at this position, we result in this structure. And hence our electronic vacuum is created at this position that has been shown here. So what we have done is we have forcefully pushed all the electronic density at this position and we have created a vacuum here. These two are two extremes. This is the first extreme in which the electronic density is on right hand side. This is the next extreme in which the electronic density is on left hand side. Now both of them are hypothetical. Both of them are non-existent. They cannot, cannot exist as such because you cannot have a vacuum it descends to electronic high pressure. That is in both the cases. What we'll have in, in, instead is we'll have an equal distribution of electronic electronic wave throughout the structure of the molecule. Now to draw the equal distribution or whether it will be equal distribution or not, it may, uh, it may, be, it may so happen that high amount of electrons remain at this position and low amount of electrons remain at this position depending upon electronegativity and size of orbitals that we will see later. But whatever the distribution has to be, it has to be between two ends. Either the whole of the electronic density will be at this position or whole of the electronic density will be at will be at this position. These are two extreme distribution. The real distribution will lie between these two extreme distributions. Now the real distribution will be something like this. In the real distribution, the electrons will be distributed throughout the molecule. This is the real distribution. I'm not doing the hydrogens, but this is the real distribution of electron. Neither this nor this but the electrons would be distributed throughout the molecule. This is called resonance. I haven't given you the definition of resonance yet. I'll give you at the proper time. But this is what will happen. This is what we understand that a gas from high pressure moves to its low pressure and ultimately reaches at equilibrium. And that's ha what happens with any kind of wave. And that's indeed what happens with electronic wave. Electronic wave moves from high pressure to low pressure and ultimately will try to get an equilibrium of that electronic pressure throughout the molecule. Now how this equilibrium will be achieved and what percentage of electrons are here and what percentage of electrons are here, we actually don't know. It will not be 50-50%. Here, because there is symmetry, it will be 50-50%. But suppose I show you this kind of structure. This is a knob here. Suppose this is a gas. Suppose there are 10 moles of gas in this structure. When we remove this knob, then out of those 10 moles, 5 moles will not go in this, no in this chamber. Suppose this is chamber A and this is chamber B. The, what, what happens is electronic pressure, uh, the, in, in this case the pressure of the gas has to be equal in both the cases. So the, if the volume of chamber B is greater, we equalize the pressure more amount of gas is required. So more than 5 moles of gas will go from A to B. Ultimately, the pressure has to be equal. So the distribution of gas is not 50% and 50%. In chamber B, it will be more than 50%. So analogous to this situation here, if the, atom, if the electronegativity of atom changes, because here on both the ends you have carbon and carbon. But instead of carbon, suppose you had nitrogen or you had oxygen, then the electronegativity of both the ends would be different. So it, there would be no symmetry. So the distribution might not be 50% not 50%. It will be 40, 60, 30, 70, 35, 65. We actually don't know. So all the time it will not be 50% and 50%. It will be different kind of electronic distribution. So to identify that kind of electronic distribution, we need to draw these kind of structures because they help in identifying where the electronic distribution is greater. How does it help? It becomes clear gradually, but it helps. Now, proceeding further, uh, how we will get this structure? Now, what I am saying, you listen to it very pro properly, I am saying that the final structure will have characters of these two structures. That the electronic wave will be here and it will be here as well. So the final structure will have a character of both the structures. Because this structure says there is electronic wave here. In the final structure, there will be electronic wave here. 
This structure says there is an electronic wave at this position. In the final structure, there will be electronic wave at this position. So as such, the final structure resembles both of them. But it is not either one of them. It has characters of both of them. So in order to draw, how to draw the RS or the real structure that exists, that is called hybrid. That is called RH resonance hybrid. So the resonance hybrid, to draw resonance hybrid, what we do is, we draw the basic skeleton of carbon with hydrogens, without the charge, without the pi bond. Now look at the charge. These are two possible resonating structures. Now the charge on the molecule is plus one unit. The charge is at C3 and the charge is at C1 both. In one of the RS it is at C3, in the other RS it is at C1. Now there is only one unit of charge, it cannot remain at two positions. So that one unit of charge is distributed at two positions, at C1 and at C3. Here, because there is symmetry, we can say that half of the plus charge is at C3 and half of the plus charge is at C1. The same unit of plus charge is distributed at two positions. That means plus half is at C3 and plus half is at C1. This is the real distribution of charge. Now there is only one pi bond in this molecule and this pi bond seems to be between C1 and C2 in this structure and this pi bond seems to be between C2 and C3 in this structure. This pi bond cannot remain at two positions. The same pi bond has to be shared between these two positions. So the same pi bond is shared between these two positions. Half of the pi bond is here and half of the pi bond is here. That fraction of pi bond we show it by dotted lines. That means there is a partial bond, there is not a complete bond here. So this is how the real structure must be. The charge must be distributed and the pi bond must be distributed as well throughout the molecule. The real molecule that will exist, it will exist like this. Not like this, not like this. It will exist like this. This is the real structure, this is called resonating resonance hybrid. This is, these are RH. These are RS. These are called resonating structures. Resonating structures contribute in the formation of resonance hybrid. Now, at this stage, I'll give you the formal definition of resonance. Resonance is the movement of pi electrons from one orbital to another. Look, the pi electrons were here, between these two orbitals. It moved from this orbital to this orbital. Now after moving to, into this orbital, it moves to this orbital. It is just simply movement of orbitals from here to here. So this phenomena is called resonance. We will compare this with hyperconjugation after a while, after we have a grip over this topic. But this movement of electrons from one orbital to another, this is called resonance. Resonance, uh, prima facie, this is resonance. Now there is huge and huge and huge implication of resonance. One of the implica implication that is evidently clear from this resonance hybrid is the charge has been distributed between C1 and C3. Previously, this C3 was devoid of one electron. So there was a plus one unit of charge. In the next RS, we have seen this C1 is devoid of one electron. So this is devoid of one electron, so it has a plus one unit of charge. In the hybrid, we see C1 and C3 are divided of half electron. It is, It has plus Half charge has plus half charge. That means both are devoid of half electron. So the deficiency per head has been decreased. Now it is devoid of only half electron and this is devoid of only half electron. If the deficiency per head decreases, the stability of that atom increases. And in that case, the stability of whole molecule increases. So the immediate consequence of resonance is it helps in spreading up the charge throughout the molecule and that brings about stability in the molecule. Prima facie, this is the consequence of resonance. There is huge implication that we will be seeing in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.